everybody. Charlie Stevens here. Thanks so much for tuning in to another guitar lesson. So today I'd just like to show you a really fun, easy riff to play, Seven Nation Army. Um, I think everybody has heard this song. I used to work at a hockey rink and I would hear this song getting played a lot. Um, so a very common one that we all hear. So that's one reason I chose it. Very fun to play and also one that hopefully you're familiar with so we can learn it by ear here. Um, you know, I figure everybody's heard this, even if you don't really like this song, you're probably pretty familiar with it. Um, so yeah, hopefully hopefully you like it a little bit too, and, uh, and it'll be a fun one for you to play. So it uses syncopation, so please check out my lesson about syncopation if you're not familiar with what that is. Um, but basically, it, this is a good example of that, because we have something on the first beat, one, two, and then nothing on the, on the second beat. That first uh, beat was a dotted quarter note, so check out my lesson on the dotted quarter note. One, two, and three. Okay, then it goes into this weird, funky rhythm, a uh, quarter note triplets, and that's a little bit more of an advanced thing than where we're at in this channel. We're just now learning about dotted quarter notes and, and eighth note rests and things, so we're not going to worry about what those look like. The uh, quarter note triplets quite yet, that's just a little bit of a jump from the chorus, but that doesn't mean that this song is too hard to play for us, and since we know it really well, we can we can kind of play it by ear. So I'm not going to show you how this looks written down, just because we haven't really learned about some of the symbols it would uh, we would need to express some of these rhythms, uh, but maybe we'll come back and do that when we do learn about quarter note triplets, maybe we can come back and check out this song as an example of them. Um, but basically, I just want you to kind of listen and kind of repeat after me to get this today. And also, you can understand that the rhythms that they're using produce this effect of syncopation that we've talked about recently. So this is a good kind of tie into that. Okay, so that's the whole riff. We're going to start on the E note here, second fret of the D string. Okay, and then we play that note again, actually. One, two, and. Okay. One, two, and. And we play up, up on that one again. You can use an up pick if you want, since it's on the and. And then we do this quarter note triplet thing. So that's a little bit of a weird rhythm. hang out there and finally resolve down. So the quarter note triplet thing goes, okay, open G, back to the second fret of D, open D, finally lands here on the C note, third fret of A, and then eventually it goes all the way down to the B note on the second fret of A. with the rhythms a little bit if you want to. And go back up to the D in between the first C and the B. Okay, play really slow like that. See, I snuck in that open D. Okay, so the notes we're playing are E, E, G, E, D, C, B, E, E, G, E, D, C, D, C, B. Okay, I don't always like going back up to that D. I think maybe every once in a while we'll make it sound cool, and sometimes maybe don't do that. Okay, so now that we listed out the notes, we can find those on just one string. Okay, this is another way of playing this song where we only will use one string. Since our first note is E, this happens to be in the key of E minor. Okay, so we can find this E here on the seventh fret of the A string. Now where's our G? It's way up here on the tenth fret of A. A would be here on the twelfth fret again, right? Open A, twelfth fret also A, walk that back. A flat, also known as G sharp, walk that back. G, right? So we have E here. And then we go right back to E. That's our first move. Seven. Seven again, up 
to 10, back to 7. Okay? So what do we do here after that? E, E, G, E, D. Well, we went to an open D string. Do we have a D over here? The fifth fret, right? We learned that from tuning. If you check out the lesson on how to tune the guitar, we learned a method where uh, we learned that the fifth fret of the A string is the same as the open fourth string, right? Both of the note D. Okay, so hopefully that's familiar to you. Hopefully you're, you're thinking fifth fret, right? That is D. Anyhow, seventh up to ten, down to five for D. Now, these last two notes we already played on the A string. Three and two, we're just going to play those there again. Okay. Now when I go back up to D, it's on the same string, and I like that better. I think it has a, I don't know, just, just sounds a little smoother then. When you let them both ring together, I don't really think that that's like the right effect for this song, but it's, it's a little bit of my preference, so you, you can feel free to disagree with me and, and do it the other way. Okay, so that's how you do the same thing all on one string. want to do it like that. It is easier like this, right? I get to use all different fingers. I'm always going to use the second finger on the second fret. I don't need any fingers on my open string. Third finger on my third fret. Second finger on the second fret again, right? So that can be really cool. I don't even really have to look. Whereas this... I guess I don't really quite have to look, but that definitely felt a little uncertain. It's much harder not to look. You kind of really want to when you're doing this vertical up and down the string approach this way, right? Um, so why are we doing it like this then if it's, if it's kind of more challenging? Well, because we can add power chords to this now. So check out the lesson on movable power chords if you haven't seen that one. But we learned that you, wherever we have a note on our A string, we also learned how to do this on the E string. But we're going to stick with our A string for today. Uh, anywhere we have a note, we can build a chord off of that by going to the next string this way and two frets that way. Now this is called the power chord. This is an E power chord. See? Now I can beef up the entire sound by adding a power chord to that line. Pretty easily, too. So wherever this finger went, the third finger stays two frets ahead, two frets that way, one string that way. When I go from 7 up to 10, this one follows along and it goes up to 12. Back to 7. Down to 5. This one follows and is at 7 now. This one goes down to 3, this one follows, and is at 5 now. This one goes down to 2, this one follows, and is at 4 now. Just that easy. Okay, we also learned we can do a 3-string version of this power chord by doubling the root. Okay, so now I have two E's. This really is the power chord, the two different notes that define the power chord, but this first one, we call that the root, that's sort of the more important one, right? That's the first one I have when I extrapolate the rest, right? I can double that note an octave higher and uh, just kind of fill out the sound a little bit. Kind of cool kind of like that way too, you can you can choose um, which way you like. Um, now since this is an E, we can also sort of do, um, this is sort of related to our pedal point idea, but it's a little different. This one is called the drone. When we just have one note that rings out through the whole thing, and sometimes we'll, we'll play it again as well to keep it ringing out since acoustic guitars, you know, you can't really sustain them forever. See, it's already wider until eventually you won't be able to hear it at all, right? So it's okay to hit it again and still call it a drone. Um, but but typically you'd want it to sort of ring. And that's, that's kind of a feature of a drone as opposed to a pedal point where we'd be hitting it over and over and over again. Since this is an E chord, that means we can play our open low E. Now we have three E's. E, E, E. And then I have this other note in my power chord in there, one B. 
That was a pretty E heavy chord. I actually have an open B and an E here too, so I guess if I wanted to play all my strings. It's not really the point of the lesson, I just thought to show you that, but that's kind of cool too. This is still an E power chord. Now I have one E, two E's, three E's, the same E, so double that exact, oops, double this exact E. And then this B is doubled on the open B string. The same exact B. So I have two of these exact Bs, two of these exact E's. So not really adding anything, not, not really a reason to do that except that you can. I figured I'd mention it. It's a cool chord. Um, for this song, we might not want to do that though, because I'm not allowed to leave these E and B's open for the whole time. Well, actually, let's just see how it sounds. Let's move around this middle chord, and I'll strum all six, and we'll, we'll just hear how that sounds. But the, those notes are not going to be part of every chord that we're passing through, so it might sound a little weird. But let's just go for it and see what happens. <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. You feel free to experiment with that. Um, but that's not really what I was planning on showing you today. I was thinking we would stick with the power chord and also just add in the low E for some bass. It kind of sounds better not to do the E here over this chord. There it definitely sounds good. There it sounds good. A little crunchy there. I kind of like it with everything, I don't know. You can you can use your taste, but you might not want to hear that. It does kind of change the sound of that chord. Doing lots of palm hits. See, a little weird over that B, but... Sounds great when you get here, right? Cool. Okay, so that's just some ideas of how we can uh, take riffs that we already know. Hopefully this one's a familiar riff to you. You can find it in position. There's lots of other places to find it in position, by the way. I'm not going to go into this, but... Same thing right there. Okay. Um, and those would be, I think, my only two places I could do that exact thing. Without just going here on one E string. Everywhere else it's going to put me into a higher octave when I start. See, that's a higher E now. These are my three E's that are exactly there. So those are the three different ways to do that. Um, you can, yeah, getting a little, little carried away on, on things. Not all of that is, is super relevant. But my point is you can take these ideas and just kind of you know, get pretty creative about it. If you can figure out what notes you're playing, and this has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five notes. This only has five notes in it. So if you can figure out what five notes those are, you can start looking for them in different places of the neck and start doing creative things, adding power chords to them, you know? Really, the sky is the limit. So that's kind of the point of this lesson, just give you something fun to play, but also kind of give you some perspective on how we can take ideas and do all sorts of cool stuff with it to really deepen our understanding of how the guitar works, and it can be a lot of fun. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me for that lesson. I hope you're having a great day. If you're liking this course, please subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you for another guitar lesson really soon. Thanks again.